Hi, Mike here. In last week's video, I covered dynamic arrays, spilling, and the hash sign. And this week, I'm going to show you a practical example of how those three features can be used together to create a dynamically updating drop down list. Now, about a year ago, I created a video that covered creating a dynamically updating drop down list. The benefit of that method is that it's compatible with any version of Excel, whereas the method I'm going to show you in this video is much simpler, but you need Excel 365. As always, a copy of the file can be downloaded from the link in the video description. In columns A to D, I have details of ice cream sales from last week. The data is in a table called ice cream sales. Columns F to I display a filtered view of that data. The records displayed are based on the value in G1. So if I go to G1 and change that to mint, you can see what happens. The magic is being done by a formula in F4. And the formula is saying apply a filter to the table called ice cream sales only show the rows where the flavor column in that table contains whatever is in G1. Now, that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is how to set up a drop down list in G1 so users don't have to type the flavor names, but can select from a drop down list. Makes their life easier and avoids typos. To create the drop down list, I'll use data validation. And for that, I'll need a list of flavors, which I'm going to put into column K. Now this list can go anywhere, even on a different sheet. But for demo purposes, I'm keeping everything on the one sheet. In column K, starting at K1, I need an alphabetical list of the flavor names. And I'm going to do this using a combination of the unique and sort functions. So if I in K1 type equals unique, the array is the flavor column in the ice cream sales table. So the way I specify that is to put the name of the table. I can just type in the first two or three characters and then click on its name from this list. Then open square brackets. And then I want flavor, which again, I can click on from the list, close square brackets, close normal brackets. What that does is it says extract one instance of each item in the flavor column of that table. That's exactly what it's given me there. To get the list in alphabetical order, I need to wrap the unique function inside the sort function. So if I double click on K1 to put the formula into edit mode, go back to the beginning and type sort, open brackets, and a close bracket at the very end. The sort function sorts whatever is in the brackets, which in this case is the result of the unique function. So if I press enter, you can now see that that list is in alphabetical order. By referencing the table name in the formula, when a new row is added to the table and the table grows, if the flavor is already listed in column A, so if I go to A20 and type peach, then nothing happens in column K. But if the flavor isn't already listed in column A, so if I type orange, we don't already have an orange in column A, the formula in column K treats it as a new item and places it in the right place alphabetically. So the last piece in this jigsaw is to create the drop down in G1. So I'll go up to G1, I'll delete what's in there and I'll click on data and then data validation. I'll set allow to list and for the source, I don't want to specify K1 to K8. What I want to do is put equals K1, which I can click on or type, and then type the hash sign. And the hash sign refers to the array, the dynamic array that starts in K1. So in this context, the list of items that will appear when the drop down in G1 is clicked is all the items in the dynamic array starting 
in K1. If I click on the drop down, you can now see that the items that are in the drop down have been generated from column K. And if I go over to A22, you'll notice that I'm not filling in the complete sales or transaction details. I'm just filling in the flavor for this demo. But if I type caramel and press enter, it adds caramel to column K, puts it in the right place automatically. And if I go up to G1 and click the drop down, caramel appears. Don't worry about the error that's in F4. That's because we don't have anything selected in G1. As soon as I select an item, it completes the filter. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.